This morning, I woke up to one of the most beautiful sights in the world. Was it a sunrise? Not this time. Was it my wife? Not this time. Was it my almost two-year-old son? Not this time. Today, I woke up and saw the thumbnail for Frank Turek's latest video on Islam. The video is titled, Is Islam False? Watch This. And the thumbnail features a cartoon of Muhammad. Those of you who are the same age Aisha was when Muhammad climbed on top of her probably won't remember what happened five years ago because you were only four years old at the time. But back in 2015, two jihadis stormed the Paris headquarters of the satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo, shouting Allahu Akbar and the Prophet is avenged as they killed 12 people and injured 11 more. These jihadis went on a killing spree because the paper had been publishing Cartoons of Muhammad. Carnage over cartoons. Ten years earlier, the Danish paper, Jelans Posten, caused an international uproar by publishing several cartoons depicting Muhammad. More than 250 people were killed in riots. Carnage over cartoons. Now, I would take it for granted that if a group starts slaughtering people over cartoons, Journalists, of all people, need to take a stand for freedom of speech by printing the cartoons and discussing them. If journalists back down, they're basically telling terrorists that violence is the way to get what they want. And that would be music to a terrorist's ears, as long as we ignore the fact that most music is haram. Unfortunately, modern journalists have pillars of marshmallows where their spines should be, so most of them encouraged more violence by giving in to terror. But some of us kept sharing the Muhammad cartoons to let jihadis know that violence won't help them get their way. Killing people over cartoons will cause us to share the cartoons more. Here we are, just a few years later, and a mainstream Christian ministry can proudly post a cartoon of Muhammad on YouTube, and no one dies or even gets threatened. That's progress. It's good for Muslims that jihadis aren't killing over cartoons. It's good for non-Muslims that jihadis aren't killing over cartoons. But there's another reason to be excited about the change that's taken place. When jihadis are running around slaughtering people over cartoons, that's a sure sign that their religion can't handle criticism and mockery. If a violent, oppressive religion can't handle criticism and mockery, what do you think our primary tools in responding to the religion should be? You guessed it, criticism and mockery. But Christians, especially Christian ministries and Christian apologists, didn't want to make fun of Muhammad, no matter how mockable he was. When a man has sex with a prepubescent girl and marries the wife of his own adopted son and beats his wives and allows his followers to hire prostitutes and walks around covered in semen and sucks on the tongues of little boys, he's basically inviting the world to mock him. He's begging us to mock him. He's saying, please mock me. But Christians don't want to do that because we've underestimated the power of mockery. We've even come to view mockery as unchristlike, despite the fact that Jesus was merciless in his mockery of hypocrites. He made fun of the way they gave money to the needy, saying that they announced their giving with trumpets in order to be praised by men. He made fun of the way they prayed, saying that they love to pray on the street corners so that they'll be seen by others. He made fun of the way they fasted, saying that they deliberately disfigure their faces and look gloomy so that other people will know that they're fasting. Jesus made fun of the way they gave to charity, the way they prayed, the way they fasted, the way they dressed, the way they tithed, the way they proselytized, and the way they treated their families. Jesus of Nazareth is the undisputed all-time king of mocking hypocritical and oppressive religious leaders. And it was massively effective. It stuck in people's minds. Somehow, we get to the 21st century, and we're dealing with the spread of Islam. And we have the most wide open target for mockery in history, Muhammad, and we think that mocking him would be unchristlike and counterproductive. Why do we think that? Two main reasons. One, Christianity has become pathetically soft to the point of abject cowardice. And two, Christians have been manipulated 
into thinking that criticizing and mocking Muhammad will keep us from reaching Muslims. Where did Christians get that idea? Christians got manipulated. Islam's entire methodology is based on manipulation and control, but it's all low-level manipulation and control. Islam manipulates and controls people through their most basic desires. Convert to Islam, and you'll get to spend eternity deflowering virgins. Sounds good, right? You don't want to convert to Islam? Well, we're going to keep fighting you until you get sick of fighting and convert. You want to leave Islam? Well, we're just going to have to chop your head off. You want to keep your head, don't you? Your wife isn't doing what you want? Just beat her until she obeys you. She won't like getting beaten. When they interact with Christians in an area where they can't simply force Christians into doing what they want, Muslims use a simple system of praise and abuse. If you act the way they want you to act, they praise you. If you don't act the way they want you to act, they shower you with abuse. When a Christian criticizes Muhammad, Muslims heap abuse on him. Most people don't like being abused, so heaping abuse on someone can be an effective means of controlling him. When a Christian goes around telling people not to criticize Muhammad, Muslims praise him. Most people like being praised, so praising someone can be an effective means of controlling him. Lots of Christians are actually gullible enough to fall for this. Everyone, look at all the Muslims who are praising me and telling me how much they like my approach. I'm really getting through to them. Unlike those other Christians that Muslims keep attacking, those Christians don't know how to reach Muslims. That's why Muslims keep attacking them. I would take it as obvious that if Muslims think your approach has any chance of leading Muslims out of Islam, they're not going to praise you. So if Muslims were ever to praise my methods, that would be an immediate warning sign to me that I'm doing something horribly wrong. But lots of Christians just fall for this instantly. Muslims really like the way I talk about Muhammad. I'm so effective with them. They love me. Christians have fallen for this manipulation for years. Christians who don't fall for it are usually treated like outcasts. We're told that we don't care about reaching Muslims because we don't use the methods that Muslims praise. Instead, we use the methods that send Muslims into an uproar. Shame on us. That's been my experience for the past decade and a half or so. So when I wake up and see a popular mainstream Christian ministry with a cartoon of Muhammad in the thumbnail of their new video, I start to think that the tides may be turning, that Christian apologists may be realizing that Muhammad deserves to be criticized and mocked, and that far from being ineffective, criticism and mockery of perverted hypocrites like Muhammad can be massively effective. I criticize and mock Islam all day, every day, through my videos, which are playing nonstop on computers and phones around the world. The sun never sets on the apologetics empire. And guess what? Muslims can't stay away. They're drawn to the mockery. And after they've witnessed the avalanche of evidence against their prophet, they leave Islam. Imagine a world where millions of Christians are exposing Muhammad day and night, where millions of Christians don't let hypocritical religious leaders tell us how to respond to hypocritical religious leaders, where millions of Christians return to our true Christian roots of mocking hypocrites and oppressors in epically memorable fashion. That would be a world in which Islam and its empire of fear and violence come tumbling to the ground. If you want to check out Frank Turek's new video on Islam with the infamous Muhammad thumbnail, the link is in the description box. On a related note, Cameron from Capturing Christianity interviewed me a while back on whether my methods cross the line. He posted that interview a couple days ago. The link to that video is also in the description box. Check him out.